We were all driving in the car. I had the cruise control on 75. As fast as I could legally go, you know, up the interstate, I was traveling through Southern Utah. And I, I lost control of the car. Maybe the most difficult part of the story is I believe I may have just dozed off at the wheel, just, just nodded off just for a second. But in doing so, I swerved to the right, I overcorrected to the left, and the car began to roll, not off the street, but down the street on the concrete at such a high speed. And it was a horrific automobile accident. I blacked out for most of that. But when the car came to a stop, I was completely conscious. And the first thing I heard was my seven-year-old son in the back seat crying. And it was that cry a father recognizes as, oh, he, I, he's okay, I've got to get to my son. But that's when I realized I couldn't move. I was pinned either to the floorboard or the seat. I couldn't. There was the rancid smell of gasoline, the broken glass everywhere. Both of my legs had been crushed. Uh, the left leg was eventually amputated above the knee. My lungs were collapsing. My right arm had almost been torn off and then the seat belt had cut through and ruptured all my insides. Emotionally, all I knew is my boy's crying, I've got to get to my son. But that's when I realized that no, no one else was crying. And, and that's when I knew um, that Tamara, my wife, was gone. And my youngest son, Griffin, who was only a toddler, he, he was killed as well. Both of them were killed instantly in the accident. And I was aware of that, I knew that in that moment. I mean, I was driving the car, I can't, there aren't words for the guilt. I, I, I was, can I just, can I not get back those three seconds? What just happened? But it was in that darkness that suddenly light came. It came rushing to me and it seemed to surround me. It felt like light was literally comforting me. It was comforting me in this horrible moment and, and suddenly I could breathe. The pain was gone. It felt like I was rising above the accident, literally going above it. And, and I was literally wondering, how can I be okay? I, I was thinking, I, I can breathe, I, I don't hurt. How can I be okay? And in this light, Tamara, my wife, appeared. She was there with me. When I say appeared, like it, it, it felt so tangible, so physical. She was with me. And she was emphatic that I go back. You know, she kept saying, Jeff, you've got to go back. You've got to go back. You can't come. And, and, and we had this incredible conversation. And I made this decision to come back. And in doing so, I found myself moving about a hospital, kind of wandering about a hospital. Now, I have no concept of time in this bubble of light, but what I later found out happened is that people arrived at the scene, you know, it was an absolute mess. A, a doctor actually stopped. They had to extricate me from the car, and then I found myself moving about this hospital. Busy level one trauma center. I was encountering the doctors, the nurses, the patients, the families of the patients. I was able to see, and, and, and they didn't seem aware of me, but I could see everybody else. And yet I was seeing them in such a profound way. I, I knew, I knew them. I knew everything about them. I knew their love, their hate, their joy, their peace, their motivations. I, 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 the word I use now is I was experiencing a oneness, an absolute connection. And, and, and it was infused with love. It didn't matter who they were or what they had done or what they hadn't done. I knew them and I loved them. And then I finally came upon a, a body or a man lying on the gurney that I didn't feel anything from, which I thought was weird given this profound situation and encounter. And I stepped closer to look and that's when I realized, oh my gosh, that's me. But, but it was not me. I was having this profound connected experience, but that was my body. And it was an absolute wreck. And, and I knew I had to get back in. And I, I it, it, it was as, what, as, as, as easy as a thought. I didn't have to figure
figure out, well, how do I, you know, how do I get back in? It was like, no, I've, I've got to go back in. And um, in the intention, boom, I was back in the body. But, but then back to the guilt, the grief, the, the, the physical injuries, the trauma, the, all of it. I mean, the regret, the, the weight. It was, it was a very difficult thing. But I was finally able to sleep on my side, and I remember falling into a deep sleep. And, and, and even being conscious of, wow, I'm sleeping. I'm peacefully sleeping. But as I did that same light, that, that light I felt at the scene of the accident that came in, it came again. The light came and surrounded me, and I felt like I was rising above the hospital bed. And as I did, I, I, I felt so joy. The pain was gone again. The grief was gone again. I mean, I, I had struggled so vividly with, with all of that. And yet this time, you know, the, 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 the light surrounded me. I looked in heaven. It seemed to, like, dissipate. It seemed to just disappear. And I was in the most incredibly uh, beautiful place. I mean, I was in the most beautiful place. And, and people say heaven or the spirit world or the other side. I mean, the only word I can use that comes close is I was home. I mean, I was home. I, I, I felt so welcome, so familiar, so comforted. And I, and, and I actually began to run. I, I mean, it, I, I wasn't running. I don't run in this room with one leg and one that barely works. But in that room, I was running. I could feel the energy of the ground under my feet. And, Intelligence, like in every cell, charging through my calves and thighs, I was gleefully running, thinking, "I'm home, I'm home," and the pain was gone. And 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 as I had that thought, I realized, "Oh, I'm not here to stay." I, I knew it was a visit. This intense presence was coming up behind me. This overwhelming, cosmic, wise, powerful. I was told there are no mistakes. You know, your life is perfect. And I would say, well, that, that was wrong. I knew it was wrong. I did it anyway. And this beautiful being communicated, those are your judgments of it, not, not ours. We love you. You're as precious and perfect and divine to us as the child you hold. We love you. I mean, it was this overwhelming, unconditional, outpouring of love and it was very personal to me but i knew if that was true of me that was true of all of us everything was love everything was light and in all that love and light and beauty and peace i i was able to kiss my little boy and, and give him back
do this anymore. I don't have to do this anymore. And um, I'm going to be so relieved. And to think of what I've endured and to think that it's going to go back to, I don't have to do that. It's just going to be so nice. This week, my health has declined in the last couple of weeks, and what's happening this week is that I expect that to continue to the point that I won't be able to take the test for the baby pills. I'm going to just follow them on my own, but it's must be done. So I think that Saturday is about my bad biggest chance of being able to fit in as many people as I want to see in here in Kansas. Not a painful way, not a crowning moon, please. Not 
I guess, like, sometimes I feel like a lot of people that still need to be helped, I guess, like, around the civic area, and not people, like, pay attention or do much to it if it's not part of their day at all, like, that's exactly how I am, but I always, like, I guess I'm just not strong enough or there's not a group that you can join, like, and get part of it.